Hello, Emmanuel here, and in today's video, we're going to talk about using UDIMS with Substance Painter and Blender for both renderers, cycles, and EV. This is part two of the video series, so be sure to check part one first. There, we learn how to set up a video material from scratch. If you miss it, you can find the link in the description. As with standard materials, UDIM materials can be created automatically with my plugin, but today I'm going to explain how to do it manually. And if after learning the how to you want to save some time and prefer an automated process, you can always use my plugins. The links are in the description. Let's open Painter. Currently, when you want to work with UDIMs, you have two options. Either using the legacy system, which splits each UDIM tile into a different texture set, or use the new system that allows texture set with multiple UDIM tiles. The main disadvantages of using the legacy system are that you can only have one material per Painter project and that you cannot paint across UDIM tiles. And up until Painter 2021, the advantage was that you were able to hide geometry by hiding texture sets. But now, since you can hide geometry in Painter, it's no longer the case. So unless you have a pipeline that requires the legacy version, I would recommend to always use the new workflow. You can select who you want to use in the new project window of Substance Painter. Consider that after creating the project, you cannot switch between workflows. For this video, we'll be using the new workflow. As you can see in this project, I have one texture set that has three UDIM tiles. But with this workflow, you can have multiple texture sets, each with its own UDIM tiles, as you can see in this other project. If you are not that familiar with UDIMs, think of them as multiple UVs grouped together and organized in a 10 by 10 grid, with each UV represented by a 4 digit number called tile, starting with 1001. The first row goes from 1001 to 1010, the second one from 1011 to 1020, etc. You can organize your UDIMs any way you want. You can leave empty tiles between them, use different resolutions, even different file formats. The only real rule is that for Blender, you always need to have some UVs on the first tile, the 1001. Otherwise, it won't work. With that said, let's see how we need to set up the export preset we created in the previous video. All we need to do in order to be able to use the same preset with standard UV texture sets and UDIMs is to add an optional UDIM variable to the map names. We do this by grabbing the UDIM key preceded by a point inside a parenthesis. This will tell Substance that if the project is UDIM based, it needs to include the UDIM number in the map name. And if it's not, just ignore it. Let's add the UDIM key to all the maps. And now we're ready to export the maps. As you can see, the results are multiple maps per channel, each one representing a UDIM tile. For example, with this project, I have three base colors, three metallics, three normals, and three roughness maps, each one with its UDIM tile number as a suffix of the file name. Let's go to Blender and check how we can use these maps. To prepare this file, I imported the mesh with texture in Painter and added the same HDR light that we're using on Painter, in this case, Tomoko Studio. So let's select the mesh and go to the object context in the shader editor. All we have here is a material output and a principal shader. And the process to create a UDIM based material is basically the same one I showed in part one. The only difference is the way we set up the image texture node. So let's create an image texture node and open the base color image. For UDM images, all we need to do is select one image of the channel we want to add. So we select base color 1001, but we could also select base color 1002 or 1003. And once loaded, we'll notice that Blender is smart enough to change the source to UDM tiles. Now, if we open the image editor and select the base color image, we'll be able to see all the tiles. And if we open the image properties, in the UDIM tile section, we'll be able to see the list already filled. If for some reason we want to add more tiles, for example, let's remove 1002 and 1003. We can click the plus button, set the initial number of the tile we want to add, and add the quantity of tiles we want to add. This will tell Blender to also look for those files. So after adding them, all you need to do is click the refresh button. If Blender cannot find the respective file, it will repeat the last tile. Let's remove the extra ones. The rest of the process is basically the same as with the non-UD materials. So we can create a texture coordinate node and connect the UV to the vector and the texture color to the base color. Set the color space to sRGB since it's color information and we can see the base color working on cycles. 
If we switch to EV, it will also work as expected. This method will work with all the maps, even if you create a displacement at object level with a modifier. Let's add a displace modifier, create a new image, go to the image details, and open the height 001 image. And the source will be set to Udim tiles. Set the color space to raw. Then go back to the displace modifier, set the coordinates to UV, and adjust the string. And it's working as well. Now I'll add the rest of the maps. Since we already checked that in the first video, I'll do it off camera. And all the maps are working now. The greatest advantage of the Udim workflow is that you can increase the resolution of the materials in your assets, and you only need to create one shader network. An alternative will be to split the asset in many materials. For example, in this case, I will need three materials. But that has two major drawbacks. First, you cannot paint across materials, so widening seams could become difficult. And second, you will require to create many shader networks, one per each material. The latter can quickly become a hassle to do and manage, considering that, for example, some movie assets tend to have 70, 90, or even over 100 UV tiles. Well, that's all for now. Hope you learn how it is to work with UDIMs inside Blender. See you next time.